Well, she has been serving as California's 16th senator, a 16th district senator for about four and a half months now. She's also serving as the Senate leader for the GOP in Sacramento. Shannon Grove joining us in studio tonight. First time we've had a chance to talk since you've been elected. That's true. Thanks for having me. And so just a week after you were elected as a 16th Senate a senator, 16th district senator, you were elected by your peers as GOP Senate leader. Yes, so I did the leader elect until March 1st and then took over officially on March 1st. Wow, so that really filled up your plate as if it wasn't full already. Tell our viewers, what, what are the responsibilities of the uh, minority leader in the Senate? So basically recruiting candidates, making sure that we have good candidates that fit the district that they serve. We have two candidates we've already recruited, um, SD23, we have a Rosalicia Ochoa Bogue, and then we have also um, uh, Jose Jesus Andrade up mm -hmm. in um, the, the Northern Valley area. Mm -hmm. So Stockton, Merced, Modesto area. So you try and keep the troops in line? and Keep the troops in line, make sure <laughs> that we work with the other side of the aisle to get our legislation out that members have, um, working with the governor on some stuff okay. that needs to be worked with, but mainly recruiting candidates, raising money, and getting good quality people to be elected. Uh, the big nut to crack is working with uh, your colleagues on the other side of the aisle, right? Uh, because <laughs> that is pretty the, bad. The Democrats are in the majority, the super majority. So they're, they're calling all the shots up there pretty much, um, at least from an outsider looking inside that's the way we see it and they're pushing their progressive social agenda where do you see the biggest battle being fought legislatively speaking in 2019 taxes uh, there's 6.3 billion dollars of new taxes um, that are proposed so taxes are definitely the issue when you have 53 percent of Californians say they can't afford to live here having the Democrats propose 6.3 billion dollars of tax increases they're gonna tax they've already taxed your air they're gonna tax your water and um, restrict your water to 55 gallons a, d a day per person they've got a gas tax that we just passed that's the highest in the nation they're going after big gulp taxes uh, soda taxes uh, just all kinds of taxes, service taxes. So um, they're asking to uh, take more money from you, hmm. all of us. Thanks. As Senate Majority Leader, where, where are you focusing your energy? So as Senate Minority Leader, we're focusing our energy on um, recruiting tax or recruiting candidates that can run for the districts that we need to take back the supermajority so that we can stop tax increases when they come up. Because it would be nice to have those additional two seats so that we could um, block this $6.3 billion in tax increases. Wow. I mean, water tax and air mm -hmm. taxing, mm -hmm. you know. The water tax is a way to pay for infrastructure to make sure that everyone in California has access to safe drinking water. We have a multi-billion dollar surplus. Let's use that money to make sure that we don't have third world countries, third world country populations like in Porterville, when you see that they don't even have running water. Right. I mean, why don't we use a surplus to pay for that mm -hmm. instead of taxing uh, water? You've also been working on a legislation to reduce rural theft. Can, can you tell us a bit more about that? So the Democrats aren't interested in making another crime. So what we did is we strategically took grand theft uh, crime and took agriculture theft out of grand theft crime. So that um, when fines, uh, most people say copper wire, but when you take a copper wire off a pump and it causes a crop to go bad or a $100,000 tractor disappears, that's detrimental to a small farmer. Um, yeah. Those fines for those penalties will go back to rural crimes like Kern and and Tulare, Santa Barbara counties, so that they can fight real crime. All right, I got to ask you about this. Uh, a new faith-based nonprofit called One Door is getting yes. ready to open up a medical assisted detox facility in Bakersfield that will uh, help people who are addicted break their addiction by going to medically assisted detox, getting clean there, even if they can't afford it. Now, this seems like a kind of a missing piece to the puzzle we're talking about here, especially as it affects the homeless, be not just the indigent, but the homeless, because that seems to be the biggest common denominator in our homeless population is drug addiction. So I'm wondering, is, is this something the legislature needs to look at in terms of its overall approach to reducing homelessness to figure out maybe some type of grant funding to make facilities run by nonprofits like One Door sustainable in the long term. Yeah, I think the legislature should definitely be looking at it because you have a greater, uh, the greater population of our homeless that we have are, it is because of addiction. Mental health is a big part of it as well and also the affordability of living in California. And you look at One Door's um, 
proposal to let you have treatment whether you can afford it or not so it's not just the wealthier or the rich that are getting treatment and you look at the story behind the testimony between Louis and Jairus and the 10 years that that Louis was on the street right and Louis right and, yeah, and, and, his, and his wife Jairus were local here right co-founders of the organization and you look at their testimony and how he was able to get off drugs and and what they're doing now with one door and there is a definitely I think a, a situation where the the legislature should step in and fund nonprofits the Democrats of course are in a control and their solution to drug addiction is to have um, safe injection sites so that people can safely go to the strip mall or the mini mall and get a safe injection. That's their solution. Now our solution would be to get people off of drugs and get them into safe, affordable housing. Uh, we got about 45 seconds left. Just your thoughts today on what is unfolding in Paris with the burning of the Notre Dame Cathedral. You know, when I was in station in Germany, I had the opportunity to visit the cathedral. I actually took my mom there when she was um, visiting me. And it's really sad. It's a sad day for Catholics and the faith community and, and the French people everywhere. It's just, it's a, it's a sad day. That's an 800 year old building that. Uh, oh, it's is the in heartbeat, flames. really, of right. Paris, among other things, but perhaps no more iconic structure in Paris, perhaps aside from the Eiffel Tower, than the Notre Dame Cathedral. It's still under investigation, so we'll see yeah. what's happening, but it's a very sad day. Well, they will rebuild. It's going to take a long time, though. Yeah. yeah. Right. State Senator Shannon Grove, thank you thank for your time, you, as thank always. You. Thank okay. you. Okay.